Yo, yo, welcome back to another episode of The Diaries. I just want to give you guys a update on the challenge that we're currently right in the middle of. Today is the third day of the challenge. So the one day one, day two, and today is the day that we're going to do the sell later on. So overall, I think the the challenge has gone good. There's a few things that I would definitely change for next time. So in the last video, I came on here and I was like, oh, we've had like 300 registrants, but ClickFunnels is showing like 600. And I was like, oh, ClickFunnels must just be messing up. And then uh, I looked at the stats today and I know inside of our ConvertKit account, we've had like 1,100 people register. So I actually missed my target by, you know, 50%, which was bad. I wanted 2,000 registrants but we only got 1,100. But then I remembered, because I looked in ClickFunnels today, and as you can see, ClickFunnels is saying that 1,900 people is registered, so pretty much our target. And I'm like, something seems off. But what I forgot, which is stupid of me, and I did mean to put this in, but we had the email confirmation where when someone joins your email list, they have to go to that first email and click confirm. And when they click confirm, then they actually get officially added to your list and will receive the emails. So what's happened is, is that 1,900 people have registered on the landing page, which we hit our goal, but only 1,100 of them have gone to the email and clicked confirm, which is interesting. I never realized the discrepancy was that bad. I thought maybe like 75% of people would probably click to confirm. Maybe we would lose like 25%, 20%, 15% of the leads. But at this point, it's like, what is it? Like 50 to 45% of people have not gone through to confirm the email. And therefore, those people aren't going to get the links to attend, which is crazy. So that was, even though... It feels good to make sure that everyone confirms their subscription to your email list. If I'm missing out on like 45% of the leads, then I don't think that's a net positive, even if all of those emails get delivered, which is interesting. So, so I probably wouldn't do that next time. I would probably take, you know, 1,900 people registering and not confirming their email. So that was definitely something I would improve. You know, our email health is great in terms of we send out an email with our broadcast to about 22,000 people, about 40% plus open it every single time. But would I prefer an email list of you know, 40,000 people, double that, and maybe not everyone open it? You know, it, I, I think oh, if, if it's literally that big of a discrepancy that, you know, like around 40% of people aren't confirming their subscription, then I don't think it's a net positive. I think it's a net negative. So if we were to do the challenge again, I would definitely take that off. But other than that, the short rate has been pretty good. Considering we only have 1,100 people actually register and get the emails, on the first day, we had over 300 people live with us. So our short rate was like, you know, just, it was like 29 point something percent, I think it was. Um, so the short rate was really strong. And I know a ton of people are watching the replay because um, we've had emails about it and uh, people have been posting inside of the Facebook group and stuff talking about the replay. So that's been really good. The short rate was very, very strong. I mean, we have a pretty, I would say at this point, a pretty bulletproof process when it comes to like increasing short rate to challenges and events. It's probably something we're, we're best at. So that was good. Day two, it was still similarly strong. I think it was like 235 or something like that. You know, I've seen it in previous challenges, the drop off from day one to day two could be again, like you could get like half, not half the amount of people, but like you could get like a good chunk of the amount of people drop off. And for us to only go from like, maybe drop off like 50 plus people from day one to day two, that's pretty good. And the drop off from day one to day two is always the best, the biggest from day two to day three, the drop off isn't going to be that big because people are committed at this point. So Yeah. Big learning is on the registration process. I'm not going to have that email confirmation in the future, but our short rate was really strong. The content of the challenge, I have a lot more confidence in this time, and I've got a good feeling it's going to make a lot of money. 
I think, but then at the same time, I'm like, sometimes just because you're getting good engagement from people and people are enjoying the content, doesn't mean they're going to buy from you, right? Are we giving away too much value? Are we not doing enough sales frames? I don't know, right? We'll figure that out. Well, we'll find out when we do the sell later on today. But compared to the previous challenge that we've done, I feel like the connection between us and the audience is stronger. I feel like the messages, the messaging is resonating a lot more. And I feel like there's a stronger connection. But again, that means nothing if people don't buy. So um, I'll do another video on kind of like, obviously the results of the challenge, I'll show you the revenue and all that sort of good stuff. So, um, but it feels pretty good. You know, I, I would like for us, if we've got like 1100 people register, I would, you know, how many is that? I mean, I would probably be happy with like 30 people buying. I think that would be a realistic number for us to hit. So let's see. Other than that, the VIP upgrade um, didn't do too well. As you can see here, um, again, it would only convert it at like 2.85%, which is super low. So um, we didn't have a workbook this time. So for our clients at the agency, they will typically have like a workbook. And it's not a physical workbook that gets sent to them, but it's like a digital workbook. And maybe that is just has a lot more perceived value than uh, I thought. And maybe having that just more of a tangible asset to have will make people buy the VIP. Because right now the VIP is basically lifetime access to the recordings and then also VIP sessions, which are much more valuable than the workbook. Like the VIP session is like a live Q&A with my business partner. And, you know, she, literally the Q&A sessions have lasted like one to two hours. So like, it's very, very, like, it's very, very valuable, but you know, people's perception is what matters, not actually how valuable it is. And I think maybe when you're registered for a free event, Q and A session versus like a tangible workbook, maybe in the mind of some people, the, the workbook is more valuable. So that's something we will probably do for next time is create like a digital workbook. We'll add that to the VIP offer and see if it converts better because 2.85% is shit. <laughs> Just being, I, I thought the page was good. I thought the sales video was good, but that conversion is, is shit for, for 27 bucks anyway. It's, it's not very good. So we've only brought in an extra $1,400 in sales with the VIP, which is obviously nothing. So yeah, that's a few learnings so far. Everything else I said, like I said, other than maybe like the registration and the VIP, everything else feels good. Um, I'm confident we're going to make a lot of money on it. So I will just update, update you guys uh, next week with the results. So that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.